Good morning and welcome to our live broadcast of Fourth Street Church of Christ. We're grateful to everyone that is tuning in to our broadcast on this morning and especially to those who are in the audience. We're grateful uh, to God uh, for each of you. Uh, we are again grateful that the Lord has blessed us to see a day that we have never seen before and we are grateful uh, that our God is so good to us uh, in spite of our difficulties. Uh, we are again want everyone to know that we are praying uh, for you in the midst of all that you are going through. We pray that God is still uh, in control and we know that he is and uh, we're trusting in God every day uh, for him to provide what he needs to provide for us. And so we encourage each of you, especially those of the Fort Street congregation uh, where I serve, and I want you to know how much we appreciate uh, your support and your love uh, through this pandemic. We want to again uh, remind you uh, on the offset that we're going to begin uh, with our communion. Uh, if you uh, have your communion in hand, uh, in the living room, wherever you are, uh, we want you to uh, partake at this time. We're going to read a passage of scripture uh, to remind us of what we are doing and to remind us of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross uh, for your sins and, uh, and for mine. So we're going to begin uh, in the book of Matthew uh, 26, Matthew uh, 26 and around verse uh, 26, Matthew 26 and around verse beginning at verse 26. The Bible uh, reads, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. We do this every Lord's Day and according to the New Testament church of which we are, Acts 20 and 7 uh, simply states upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them ready to depart on the morrow and continued his speech until midnight. At this time, let us give thanks for the Lord's broken body and his shed blood. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly approach your throne of grace and of mercy. Thank you, Lord, for this day that you have allowed us to see. We are grateful yet again for your mercy and your grace. And we thank you, God, for the opportunity that you have given to us every Sunday to be able to assemble together and to partake of Jesus Christ, his body and his blood. We thank you, God, for all that you've done through him for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. We're certainly going to encourage you as you partake of the Lord's uh, broken body and his shed blood uh, that you remember what Jesus did on the cross uh, for your sins and uh, for mine. We're always grateful when we keep our minds focused on his death, uh, his burial, and his resurrection. Uh, we are grateful again that God has given us this opportunity uh, not only to commune with him but also uh, to give of what God has commanded us to do every Sunday. And so uh, we want to remind you uh, right now that if you have not gone, uh, have not given rather, and uh, we encourage you to go to our website 
uh, and uh, fortstreetcoc.org. And we encourage you to uh, click on uh, the heart at the top right uh, of your screen and make sure that you give uh, what God has uh, prospered you. And that's the way we give. Uh, we give as God has prospered us. And so we encourage you to do that uh, throughout uh, uh, the, the days uh, here, the weeks here coming along, uh, if you have not done so already. And so again, we thank you uh, for your sacrifice financially. And many of you, especially the 4th Street congregation who have been sacrificing financially for us, uh, we don't take that lightly. Uh, we don't take that for granted. And so we're grateful and very appreciative of the great sacrifice that this congregation is making. I am I'm pleased to be able to serve a wonderful congregation as the 4th Street congregation. And so we are thankful. Uh, I would not trade them for anything. Uh, so we're grateful yet again uh, for God's people here in Omaha, Nebraska. And we're thankful that they are diligent in their service uh, to uh, the Lord. Uh, we're going to, uh, at this time, uh, we're going to sing. I've some, got some singers with me uh, around. They're going to uh, take their position uh, at this time. Somebody uh, is going to bring a book. They're going to get closer. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, somebody's going to bring me a book. Uh, and we're going to begin uh, our singing. Uh, and uh, so y'all just bear with us uh, as um, uh, we join our voices uh, in singing uh, praises unto God. Uh, so uh, you can get a little closer uh, and, uh, and get your books out. Uh, if you're at home and you've got a songbook or if you know the words, uh, you can certainly uh, sing along with us. Uh, and we're grateful uh, to be able to just come Amen. and to sing praises uh, unto uh, our God. Uh, we're going to first uh, sing uh, hymn number 284. 284, Hilltops of Glory. Hilltops of Glory. Uh, and they're going to sing along, and we trust that you will sing along with us at home. Hilltops of Glory. Onward to rejoice in our treadless way higher. I'm climbing these paths in the hilltops of glory in our rising in view. And all shall be made new. Yes, everybody sing hilltops of glory. And now can see, oh, brother, won't you come go with me? Say, for the mountain I soon shall stand. He'll toss of glory, he'll land way down in the of mid in sand Moses had started for king the land never turned back with always a sin on to the journey in the end yes everybody sing a hilltop of glory I now can see Oh, brother, won't you come go? Yes, you know I'm safe on the mountain. I soon shall stand here. Tops of glory in land. Footsteps of Jesus before us lead we trip like journey is war in city evil a lumen cannot prevail I'm on the river that real is everybody 
God is in a hilltop of glory. And now, yes, brother, oh, brother, won't you come, go? Yes, you know. I'm safe for the mountain I see shall stand in tops of glory he'll land in everybody's in tops of glory and I can see oh brother oh crap the Lord he come go with me you know I'm safe from the mountain I soon shall stand. Everybody sing a hilltop of glory. He'll land. Yes, everybody sing a hilltop of glory. I now can see your oh, crop. The one you come go with me. You know I'm safe on the mountain. I soon shall stand. Everybody sing his tops of glory land. Amen. Amen. We trust that you enjoyed uh, that selection thus far. And we're just going to go across the street here and sing 283. Uh, 283, right across 284. And we're going to begin. I'll be listening. Uh, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. If you have it and in your living room, you can join along with us as we sing. When the Savior calls, I will answer. And when he calls for me, oh, I will hear. Here when the Savior call, I will end. This and I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, and I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere. Yes, sinner, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Yes, sinner, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. And if my road He'll right away he called Yes, and is my room He's a wide, oh, I will hear Yes, and is my room He's a wide, when he called Well, and I'll be somewhere Listening for my name, oh, and I'll be somewhere. Listening, I'll be somewhere. Listening, I'll be somewhere. Listening for my name, oh, and I'll be somewhere. Listening, I'll be somewhere. Listening, I'll be somewhere. Listening for my name. And if my heart is right when he calls, well, and if my heart is right, oh, I really hear. Yes, and if my heart is right when he calls, well, then I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, and I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening. 
Yes, then I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, and I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, and I'll be somewhere yes and I'll be somewhere yes then I'll be somewhere yes then for my name oh and I'll be somewhere yes then I'll be somewhere yes and I'll be somewhere listening for my name oh and I'll be somewhere listening I'll be somewhere listening I'll be somewhere listening for my name yes and I'll be somewhere this then I'll be somewhere then I'll be somewhere listening for my name the church say amen. Amen. Uh, ain't good to come and praise the Lord. Amen. Ain't it good to sing praises yes, yes. unto his holy name. Amen. And any time that we can come together and sing praises unto God, we ought to be glad. Um, because we're glad to be with the Lord and in his presence on this morning. Amen. To all of you, again, who are tuned in to our live broadcast, we thank the Lord for each of you. We welcome you to uh, the Fort Street Church of Christ, where Christ is magnified, the church is edified, and God is glorified, and our soul is satisfied. Amen. And so we're grateful that God has been blessing us even in these turbulent times. Amen. I'm grateful again uh, to our brotherhood as many of you uh, know that we have been meeting in our weekly Zoom meeting and Dr. Warren G. Blakeney Sr. has been spearheading this meeting amongst our uh, preachers and pastors uh, to try to unify us uh, together even in these difficult times. And so uh, one of the things that we have talked about is to uh, encourage uh, the people with a message of hope. Uh, and so today we want to uh, simply uh, do just that. Uh, and if you have your Bibles, we're going to uh, hopefully share God's message with you uh, in light of what we are uh, all experiencing in these uh, difficult uh, times. Uh, we want to turn your attention to uh, the book of uh, First Peter. Uh, if you have your Bibles, we're going to turn uh, to the book of First Peter, and the chapter is one. Uh, First Peter, and the chapter uh, is one. And we're going to begin at verse number one all the way through uh, verse number uh, uh, seven and perhaps number eight uh, as we speak from the subject uh, birth into a living hope. Birth into a living uh, hope. Here Paul, uh, Peter rather says um, in verse number one, Peter, uh, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers uh, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. It says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood 
of Jesus Christ. And he says, grace uh, unto you and peace from uh, be multiplied. And then he says, blessed, verse number three, be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time wherein ye greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth though it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ whom having not seen ye love in whom though now ye see him not yet believing ye rejoice in with joy unspeakable and full of glory I want to begin uh, the lesson today by encouraging all of us who are members of the body of Christ. Those of us who are in Christ, those of us who are children of God. I want us to really uh, get an understanding and try our best, even in these difficult times, to learn the things that God is trying to teach us in these difficult times there are always times where God is teaching us some things and I just want to uh, begin by just encouraging you uh, not to get weary and uh, not to get discouraged about life or where life has brought us um, but to have trust in the Lord uh, and surely uh, we who are people of God who have received salvation uh, ought to have hope. Uh, and so I want to speak from the subject birth uh, into a living hope. Uh, here in, in this, uh, obviously, this passage of scripture, uh, Peter is writing uh, to uh, the Jews, obviously, uh, Jewish Christians who were scattered uh, and primarily some of the Gentile Christians as well who were scattered throughout different parts uh, uh, of the world. And, uh, and he writes the book, uh, Peter is writing to uh, specifically to those that were scattered, obviously, uh, those Christians who were uh, having some difficulty uh, in their lives. And so we know that difficulty is no strange thing uh, to many of us and to Christians worldwide uh, because uh, difficulties has always been uh, even from first century. Uh, so from first century to uh, 21st century we do have difficulty and so it is no strange thing. But God because of his mercy and his love towards us uh, has of course uh, brought us uh, as Ephesians chapter 2 as Paul says uh, from being dead to being alive. Uh, I want you to know that God the Father is looking for a specific uh, people and uh, and uh, back in the old days in those westerns you used to have see the signs wanted dead or alive 
Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you that God is looking for folk not wanted dead or alive, but wanted dead and alive. Uh, he wants us dead to sin, but alive in Christ Jesus. And so what God has done for us uh, is through uh, our journey as people of God, he has given us uh, hope. Uh, because as Paul says, if only in this life we have hope, he said we are most men miserable. In other words, if, if all we have to look forward to is this world, then we just might as well get ready to be miserable. Uh, so we don't look to this world to give us hope. Uh, we look to God and we look to uh, um, the salvation and to the things that God has given to us as a result of our faith. Uh, because as Paul says, for by grace, are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, lest any man should boast. So it's important to understand as, as we get into this lesson uh, to try to help us in, in, our, in, our, in our thinking. Uh, because most of the time what happens in life is that we are affected by uh, the difficulties and, uh, and problems of life uh, but sometimes we have to not allow those difficulties to take root into the mind and into the heart because uh, if you allow your trials or your difficulties to get in the mind, uh, I guarantee you, you'll begin to sink. Uh, somebody says it's not, uh, it's not what happens when, uh, when, when the water, uh, amen, or the boat is on the water, but when the water gets in the boat, uh, that's a whole nother issue there. So sometimes we allow the waters of life uh, to get into the boat of our hearts and we allow ourselves to sink because uh, we have no faith. Amen, somebody. And so we need to understand that if we are going to make it through and I believe that with God's help and with God's strength that we're going to make it through uh, all the difficulties not just this difficulty but every difficulty that we face uh, from day to day we are going to make it through and I want you to be uh, encouraged uh, by uh, the fact that you are a child of the living God so Peter begins his letter uh, as he encourages uh, the, the saints here uh, throughout who were scattered around and this was the time of Nero uh, and many of the Christians suffered they uh, they were persecuted um, they uh, their lives were uh, upside down uh, they were shown a lot of hostility uh, because of their belief in the Lord they suffered they had all kinds of difficulty that happened uh, to them and so uh, with that thought in mind what we now see is Peter's uh, encouraging words to those of us who are people of God those who have been sealed saved and sanctified he then he says he begins by saying blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now again, uh, this is very important to understand what Peter is doing here. He's first of all giving God some praise. Uh, he's praising God and he is uh, through the word blessed. He is using uh, this word. It means uh, we get the word eulogy from this. Uh, it means to speak well of. When you eulogize, eulogatos, it speaks it, it, it helps, has the mindset of speaking well of somebody. Well, what Peter is going to do here is he's going to get us uh, our minds ready uh, to focus on the goodness of the Lord. And he's getting our minds ready uh, to tell us about what God has done. What are you going to say, Peter? What are you going to tell us about the God that we serve? What are you going to remind us of? Well, uh, I want us to know it is a privilege uh, to be a child of God. 
Amen, somebody. It's a privilege to be a child of God. And we have to recognize that had it not been for the love and the mercy of God and the grace of God, you and I would not be where we are today. So he begins by giving God the credit. He said, blessed be God. Now in the original text, uh, uh, the word be is not here uh, in, the, in the original language. So uh, it would read blessed God. Amen. He, he begins by saying blessed God, he says, and Father. What he wants us to realize is that the only person that need to have praise from us is God. Amen. The only person, even in difficult times, that needs praise from us is God. I want to uh, focus on three things uh, as, as we focus on this lesson and what we can learn. Uh, first of all, number one, God has rebirthed us. God has reborn, reborn us. Uh, amen. And number two, uh, uh, because of our uh, rebirth and our uh, being born again, uh, we also, uh, God has also revealed uh, some things to us. Uh, and because of God's revelation, uh, now we can rejoice. And so we're going to hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully you will get something from uh, this that will help you in uh, understanding and in what you and I have been born into. We have been born into a living hope. And we have been born again. So he says, uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe what Peter is saying here, and again, helping us to understand that the same God uh, that was with Jesus is the same God that's going to be with you and I. So don't need to worry about your life and what you are. If you can look at the life of Jesus Christ, if you can take a look at Jesus and how God was with him from the time he was born to the time that he went to the cross, I believe somebody ought to be praising God. Uh, because when you look at Jesus Christ and how nothing happened to Christ uh, except what God wanted to happen to him. Uh, and I believe that even as uh, children of God, uh, there is absolutely nothing that happens to us uh, that God does not want to happen. And if there is a blessing that God wants you to receive. I believe that uh, can nobody open a door that God has closed. Can nobody close a door that God has opened. Whatever God has for you, I, I believe and I, I know that we're going to get it uh, because of who God is. So we don't need to fret or worry as people of God because even in these difficult times, God is still with us. But we need to focus our minds uh, and not allow our feelings uh, to carry us through our journey called Christianity. Uh, because if you allow your feelings to carry you through this, you're not going to make it. Uh, because so many of us are emotional, uh, and we're all emotional uh, beings, but we should not allow emotions to control us. So we need truth. We need facts in order to help us in our daily journey uh, with the Lord. And here I want to suggest to you some facts, some truth about our salvation that I believe will give us hope uh, of our Christian life. He he said, blessed be God, that's the first thing, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. If Jesus can make it from the time he was born to the cross, to the purpose for which God had called him, I believe that every child of God, no matter where you are, God has called us to this life. And he has called us to this life from the time we were born into Christ, we were birthed into to Christ, God has called us, and Peter is going to remind us that if anybody is going to get from where uh, they are to where God wants them to be, it's going to have to be by the power of God. And so here uh, he says, which, watch this now, he says, which according to his 
abundant mercy. Now, understand that it is through the mercy of God that God has allowed us to be born into uh, this living hope. Uh, he says he had begotten us again. What that means simply is that God has allowed us the privilege of being born again. God has allowed us the privilege of being in Christ. None of us deserve to be in Christ. None of us deserve salvation. So what happens to us is that because of our faith, because of our belief in the Lord, because of our, uh, our trust in God, uh, God has now said, if you want to have some living hope, uh, and, and of course, uh, as Peter is writing to a Jewish audience, uh, uh, he reminds them because the Jewish audience have been several in, in the Old Testament been known uh, to talk about an inheritance. Uh, when you talk about the Canaan land and the land that flowed with milk and honey, they were used to understanding what inheritance is all about because God had already told his chosen people in the Old Testament that they had to look forward to a day where he's going to give them an inheritance, a land that flowed with milk and honey. Now in the New Testament, we find that God is doing the same thing today. God is giving us some hope and by telling us exactly what he has prepared for us. Uh, Paul said that eyes have not seen nor ears heard. Amen. Uh, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. So it's important to understand that where, where do we get our hope from? Well, we get our hope from the fact that God has some things prepared for us. And if you want to get what God has prepared, then you have to come into, uh, amen, the system that God has already laid out. And we talked about that last week, how God had laid it out before the foundation of the world. So God had already given us the answer and the solution uh, and hope uh, even before the foundation uh, of the world. Now, uh, he says, according to his abundant mercy, mercy means that we don't get what we really deserve. And that's in essence what mercy is. Uh, when you talk about mercy, you're talking about uh, uh, you and I who don't even deserve. Now, if you have your Bibles, let's turn real quickly uh, to Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 2. I believe we were in there on last week. I want you uh, to turn your attention to the book of Ephesians. Uh, and, uh, and the chapter is 2. And here is what Paul says to the church. Uh, he says to the church here uh, and around uh, verse number uh, uh, 4, he said, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. I believe that every child of God ought to be thankful for Jesus Christ because ultimately he's our hope. Everything is because of Jesus Christ. No wonder when we go back to 1 Peter uh, chapter uh, 1, we hear Peter echoes the same sentiments here when he says that uh, which according to his abundant mercy, verse number 3 of 1 Peter 1, had begotten us again unto a lively hope. 
by the resurrection of Jesus Christ or through the resurrection of Jesus Christ or because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In other words, without Jesus, there will be no hope. Now, we, we are not, uh, uh, sometimes we have to understand that, uh, we, that the word hope is not the same as how the world uses it. Uh, or uses the word hope. Uh, uh, somebody said, I hope uh, to get a job or I hope this. No, when you, when you have biblical hope, it is, it is expectancy. It is expecting that God will do what God says he will do. It is the word elpis. It, it, it is confident expectation. And every child of God ought to have a living, not a dead, but a living confident expectation because he served a God who is alive. He serves a God who allowed Jesus Christ to die and then he was buried, but on the third day, he was raised from the dead. With that in mind, it ought to, it, it ought to allow our minds to, uh, uh, to get to the understanding that if God can raise Jesus Christ from the dead, then God can raise us from the dead. Amen. As a matter of fact, that's what Peter is saying. Peter is saying that God has, uh, has begotten us again. We have been reborn. We have been rebirthed into a lively hope, a hope that is confident, a hope that is lively. He said, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now that means that what God has done, he has raised Jesus Christ from among the dead. Uh, that means, again, that all of the folks that who died, uh, amen, from among the dead ones, God has raised Jesus Christ to the place where he is right now at the right hand of God. Therefore, what does that do for our hope? It gives us hope because we know that if he can do that, for his life, he can do that for our lives as well. He can do the same thing. God, God's power uh, has no limits. And I dare anybody uh, to limit the power of God. Uh, there are some folk who believe that they can raise the dead. Amen, somebody. But I guarantee you the same power that can raise the sick can also raise the dead. And I dare anybody to limit the power of God. If you say you got power to do one thing, you can do everything else. Uh, amen. Uh, and to do all kinds of miracles and heal. Uh, that's false. Uh, amen, somebody. We need to understand uh, that we have a lot of false prophets that are going out into the world. And so we need to understand the only time that and, and power that anybody has, it is through Jesus Christ. Uh, because he said all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth none of us have all power and that's why we trust in Jesus Christ because he is the one that has done it now God not only uh, has uh, now watch this he says he has given us this lively hope this confidence that we have that practically things in our lives will be all right no matter what we're going through no matter what we're facing we have hope we have biblical hope. We have confident expectation that God is going to provide for us in the midst of it all. We don't need to fret or to worry because he has given us this, 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 lively, uh, this lively hope uh, that we have uh, in the Lord. So what we have here in this text is the reminder that what God has done for us, he has put us in a position to where whenever we are facing difficulties, whenever we are facing a trial, we should not allow the trial to affect our hearts or our minds uh, because, as a matter of fact, this is why Jesus was saying uh, in John 14, he said, let not your heart 
be troubled uh, because he understands that through our weaknesses and through our, our frailty that we will tend to allow difficulty or trouble to mess with our hearts. And when difficulty messes with your mind, you can function like you need to function. And of course, uh, then you cannot have the peace of God that you ought to have because of the fact that you got all of this trouble that are on your mind and you allowing that uh, mindset then to control how you think. Yeah. When, when the Bible already tells us that if you cast all your cares upon him, he's going to care for you. Yeah. If you put everything on God, he's going to take care of it because he cares for us. We need to learn to take all those things off of us and put it on the Lord because he has the strength and the power to be able to help us even in these difficult uh, times. So we don't need to let our minds, our hearts be troubled by anything. But understand that uh, what the will of God is, you may go through a difficulty. You may have some kind of issue or challenge of your life, but you got to know the ultimate purpose that you're going through. What you're going through is simply to number one, one is to learn more about God. It's to learn what God can do. Because some of us don't really know what God can do until we go through some difficulty. Until we experience trouble. Until we experience our own trials and tribulations. We don't know the power of God. And so it's very important that what we have, what gives you and I hope, is the fact that we have a living hope. Not just a dead hope, but a living hope. That means that it is a hope that lives forever. It is a hope that breathes. Amen. And if you want to have uh, your, uh, your, your situation uh, uh, brought to life again because of what you're going, you got to breathe life into your situation and you got to allow God to breathe that life into your situation and that life is can only come through hope and through confident expectation that God uh, will uh, provide and so uh, what uh, uh, Peter again is reminded us that we have been born into this living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from among the dead. So aren't you glad this morning that Jesus was raised from the dead? If he can be raised from the dead, that gives you and I hope that we also can be raised in our situation. Whatever that situation may be, whatever your difficulty may be, we have to have a living hope. We have already been given a living hope. We just need to let God remind us. Let the Holy Spirit of God in us gives us the reminder and the strength and the confidence that we need in order to know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And we are glad to know that God has given us light at the end of a tunnel because he has given us a hope that is in, through Christ. Romans 15 and 4. Paul says, Wherefore the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning that we through patience and comfort all of the scriptures might have a hope. I don't know about you, but when I look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, people who, who boys who served the Lord, who sacrificed their life for God by saying, I don't know if God is going to get me through this. I don't know if when I go through this fire, he's going to be with me. But one thing I do know is that my God is able. Amen. And every child of God ought to be resolute 
in your convictions, in your, uh, uh, in your belief system, in understanding that if God, uh, if I'm going through a difficulty, if I'm going through a trial, I don't know if God is going to bring me through it, but I know he's able to bring me through it. My confidence is not in the fact that he's going to bring me through, but my confidence is in the fact that he has the ability to bring me through it. And that's where we, uh, we have hope. We don't have hope in the fact because we don't have anything to have hope in. The only thing we can have hope in is in the Lord Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Watch this now and we keep our minds focused, verse number four, to an inheritance uncorruptible, incorruptible rather, and undefiled and that faded not away. Watch this, reserved in heaven for you. Not only has God uh, rebirth us, but God has something revealed for us. He is something that we have to look forward to. I believe that people who commit suicide uh, have nothing, or they believe they have nothing to look forward to. They come because again, as Paul says, if and only in this life we, uh, we, we have hope, we are of most men miserable. And so it's, it's important we understand that we have the mind, we have to set the mind on things above. What do we have to look forward to? Even if I die physically, I still have hope. Because I know one day God is going to give me a crown of life. That never, I wish I had somebody here, that never fades away. We have a crown of life. We have eternal life. So we have a living hope. We have been born into this. We did not deserve it. And we, amen, and we ought not allow our minds to be thinking that we are the ones who are going to get us through it. God is the only one who can get us through anything. Paul here says that God has revealed it. God has revealed it, uh, reserved it rather. He has reserved what God has for us. God has reserved it. If that doesn't give you an I hope, I don't know what will. Because when you reserve something, you reserve in it because, and many of us have uh, had some reservations uh, when we go vacationing or traveling, uh, we are able to reserve our rooms, our hotel rooms that ensures that when we get to the hotel at whatever town that we get in our names are already on uh, amen somebody on the books uh, amen somebody and every child of God ought to be glad this morning that when God says that he has reserved something for us that means I don't have to worry about my inheritance because first of all my inheritance is incorruptible because it is not of this world not number two it is undefiled number three it doesn't fade away and number four it is reserved God ha that's why I can have some living hope y'all because God has reserved my inheritance so that means it's not, in, it's not based upon how well I do. It doesn't, come on somebody. It's not based upon how good I am. But it's about the grace of our God. God has reserved. So what we got to do is look forward to. And, and Paul reminds us in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. He says, for we know. That if our earthly house of this tabernacle could dissolve, he said, we have another building of God, a house not made with hands, and it's eternal in the heavens. In other words, my hope is in the fact 
that if I die today, I have a living hope that God promised me that if I live faithful to the end, he'll give me a crown of life that does not fade. I wish I had somebody here. Because every now and then our difficulties in our situations will try its best to make us think that God is not with us. But the Bible says if God be for us, who can be against us? We need to understand that if anybody ought to have a living hope, it ought, it ought to be us. Because God, Paul says, for we know the confidence, the assurance that you and I have comes from this fact. That if our earthly house, if this body dies, if we die today or tomorrow, we are assured that our hope is laid up for us. And that's what Paul says, that there is, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. There is something reserved for me. There is something laid up for me. So I don't, it's not, in, it's not about how good I live. Because even if, uh, amen, when you die, it's going to be grace. That's going to cover all of us. I wish I had somebody here. See, you cannot live, uh, amen, uh, you, the only way you can live to please God is by faith. Amen. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter what you did and what you did yesterday in the past. God is already reserving our inheritance that does not fade away, that's undefiled, that is incorruptible. That's the hope that you and I have been born into. We have that hope, y'all. And we don't have to allow situations to dictate to us a difference from what God has already promised us. If God makes a promise, he's going to keep his promise. But watch this now. Then as we close, Paul says, Peter says rather, who are kept by the power of God through faith Unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. God not only reserves some stuff for us, that's where I get my hope from, because he reserved it. Sometimes when these hotels reserve stuff, sometimes you get there and you don't see your name on the... They have the ability to take it off and something goes wrong. But let me tell you, church, we have a God that's not going to go back on what he promised. Amen. That's where our hope lies. And the fact that what he promised me, he's not going back. But what he will do, he's going to keep me. What God will do is in the midst of my difficulty, he's going to keep me. He says, who are kept or who are guarded or who are protected by the power of God. Church, understand that the reason why my hope is alive is not because I got all of this and I can protect myself, not because I can keep myself, not because I can provide for myself, but because God is the, is the one that can protect me, provide for me in the midst of my difficulties. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. I don't know about you today, but I ought to lean on Jesus every day. We ought to lean on the Lord because if we lean on him, we understand that he had the power to keep me. We are kept by the power of God. You are not the ones who kept you.
You are, amen, somebody. We, we don't have the power to keep us. As a matter of fact, we don't have the power to keep us from even Satan. But God has all power to keep us even in the midst of our difficulty. And then Paul, Peter says salvation. He got us unto salvation. That means that not only are we saved now, but we have to look forward uh, to our future salvation, to where God is going to give us this new body, uh, this new this inheritance that does not fade away. He said it's reserved in heaven. It is ready to be revealed. Not only is it reserved, but it's revealed and it's ready to be revealed. God is anxious. God is waiting on the time when he can reveal to us what he's been promising us all of the years of our lives. God has it ready. I'm glad to know that sometimes when, I, when, I, when I'm hungry and uh, I'm glad to know that sometimes my wife got my food ready. Uh, Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm glad to know that the food has been prepared when I'm hungry. I want you to know that as a child of God, you don't have to worry about your salvation because it's already been cooked. Uh, amen. God already prepared it and all you and I got to do is live faithful to the end and he will give us a crown of righteousness. Uh, amen, somebody. So I'm glad that God has it ready, revealed in the last time. That means now God has already prepared it before the foundation of the world. And that's why I can have hope because I know it's already ready. I know it's prepared. I know it's revealed. And uh, as a matter of fact, now I have to not allow myself to get into, uh, amen, a sadness situation or let my heart be troubled. Why? Because I can now rejoice. So Peter then says, wherein ye greatly rejoice. I'm glad to know that God has uh, born me again and has rebirthed me and has reborn me and now I have something revealed. I have something to look forward to and it's ready to be revealed in the last time. And now I can safely say that my joy and my rejoicing is not in myself and not in my ability uh, but, but in God's ability. He said now you and I can rejoice uh, amen. Paul said rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Every now and then I'm glad to know that God gives me something that I can rejoice about. I don't have time to rejoice about my present uh, amen to be sad about my present condition. I don't have time to be sad about my difficulty. But I got some time to be able to rejoice in the fact that the Lord has kept me all of these years the power to be able to keep me even in this pandemic is the fact that God I can rejoice in that fact because I know that the only reason that I'm still standing is because of God the only reason I'm still having a roof over my head is God the only reason I have some clothes on my back is God. The reason why I have food on my table he is God. And I can rejoice all day long because I don't know if God going to bring me through but I know he's able to bring me through. Every now and then you ought to be praising God and rejoicing. You ought to be glad to rejoice even in this difficulty because we have a living hope, a confident expectation that God has something prepared for you and I. Amen, somebody. We ought to be glad yeah. and to rejoice. Yeah. Watch this now. He said, though now for a season. Yeah. Church, all we're going through is just a season right now. Amen. All we are going through, he says, we ought to rejoice even yeah. though now for a season. Yeah. Because we know that the problem is not going to last. Seasons, they don't last. And trouble surely don't last always. That's why we have hope. We have a living hope. 
if need be, now that's very important as we close, if need be. In other words, if, if it's, it's necessary, it means if I don't mind, even if it, sometimes, I remember when um, uh, I was living in Tulsa and, and Popeye's chicken has just got open. There was a line all around the corner waiting for Popeye's chicken. And I was one of those folk that was in the line. And I said to myself, if need be, I'm staying in this line. <laughs> if need be, I'm staying because I know what I'm getting ready to chew on is some good old Popeye's chicken. And I'm saying to some of us who are people of God that the reason why I'm staying in my situation, the reason why I'm not giving up, the reason why I'm staying because I know there's something I have to look forward to. That's better than Popeye's chicken. I have something, so if need be, he says, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, through different kind of difficulty, Amen. through different kind of testing. No matter what the test is, I'm staying put. Because I know that sometimes it's necessary for me to go through a test. Because, if I, because it's necessary because sometimes a test can reveal uh, who others are. Yeah. Folk who say they're with you until you go through some difficulty. And then sometimes the test will reveal who you are. And you say you have faith in God, but now because of this difficulty, let me see you put your faith where your mouth is. And then God will, will, will let us go through temptations or testing to see who he is. And that's where my rejoicing comes from. Because when I get to see the power of God in my life, I begin to rejoice even in my own living room. Even on the way to church, even on the way to the store, I'm able to rejoice. Because I know that the person who is behind my life is God. The person who's able to keep me in this life yeah. is God. Amen, somebody. And I trust today that whatever you're going through, that you will let the power of God keep you as you remember that you and I were birthed into a living hope, a confident expectation that God will provide, a confident expectation that I don't know when he's going to come. Because he may not come when I want him to. But he's always right on time. My confidence and my hope is built on this truth. That God promised me that if I live faithful to the end, he'll give me a crown of life that never fades away. My hope is built in the fact that God has been keeping me all of these years. And all the stuff I have, God has kept me. And he has kept me from a, for a mighty long time. And I'm glad to know and I can rejoice because I know and we'll continue next time with this part number two because then Peter says that the trial of your faith is being much more precious. I want you to know that even in the testing of your faith that there is still hope. Even in the midst of what we are being tested, there is still hope. There is a living hope. And we've been born into that living hope. God has brought us into Christ. He has given us salvation. He has done everything that's possible. He has prepared a smorgasbord. He has prepared a table. He has it all ready for us. All we need to do is just wait on him. Wait till that moment. Wait till the moment that you're going to receive. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. He said, henceforth there is laid up for me mm, a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, is going to give to me, but not to me only, but to all them that love is apparent. 
Where are you in your, real, in your spirituality? Where are you in your trusting in God and hoping in the Lord? You ought to have confident expectation that God will provide. We don't know when, but we know that he will. We trust in, in the God who have, born, who have given us this living hope. Do you have confidence in the Lord today? Do you believe that God will bring you out of this? Do you believe that God will still do for you what he can do? What he has the ability to do? Where are you in understanding what you have in Christ? Church, we have a living hope. We have a hope because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the blessings that you and I have been given because of our living hope. I trust that something has been said and we'll continue with part two on next week because we need to understand that even in these times, God is with us. There is hope. We can look forward to confidently. So don't fret. Don't let your mind get weary. Don't let your emotions fill you up. Just allow his word to dwell in your heart. And the more the word of God dwells in your heart, the more confident you become. And the more you are grateful for what the Lord has done for what the Lord is doing and for what the Lord will do. We trust that there's something has been said if you have been convicted by the lesson, if your heart is convicted and you need the Lord, you need to be saved. The only way to be saved is simply through baptism. Acts 2 and verse 38 First century church. Peter told them, repent and be baptized. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. After hearing God's word, you got to believe it. You have to repent of your sins. Confess the sweetest name in mortal tongue and then be baptized. Baptism is essential to salvation. Don't let anybody tell you different. It was the same way for the first century. It's the same way for the 21st century. God's word does not change. And mankind has no authority to change God's word. If there is a church of Christ somewhere near you, you can contact them there. You can contact us if you're in the Omaha area and you want to be baptized. Even right now, we can baptize you today. Just call us, come by. We'll be here till five o'clock today. So you can come on by and we'll baptize you today for the remission of sins so that you can also receive the promise that God has for all of us and that God has given to us and be because he has begotten us again onto a lively hope. If you need prayer, you can put it in the comment uh, in the Facebook page and we'll pray for you. Let us know what your needs are. We'll do all that we can to keep you lifted in our hearts. So let us begin to pray at this time as we talk to God on behalf of those who have come. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly approach your throne of grace and of mercy we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. We are so grateful that you have allowed us to come together to praise your name, to worship you, and to recognize that you are the one who's in control. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you for all of those who need prayer right now. We ask God your blessings on everyone. We pray that our hearts will be reminded of the living hope that we do have as a, as, as a, as a means of our salvation, as a blessing that we have in Christ. We thank you, God. 
those who are lost jobs. Yeah. We pray your blessings on them. Yeah. Pray your blessings on those who've lost loved ones. Yeah. Those who are sick and shut in in the hospitals. Bless them, Father, according to your will. We thank you for Jesus Christ who made it all possible for us. Forgive us of our sins, for there are many. We humbly ask all of these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. amen. We thank you once again for tuning in with us today. We pray that something uh, has been said to encourage you even in this difficult time. We're praying for all of our preachers uh, uh, around our brotherhood uh, who again are on the same biblical, uh, have the same thematic uh, emphasis uh, on biblical hope. And so we trust uh, that uh, you have gained something that will take you through the week. Uh, until uh, we meet again on next Sunday, we encourage you to uh, tune in on Wednesday night on our, at 6.30 uh, on our Bible study. We encourage you to do that as well. Uh, and we encourage you to tune in then. And of course, back here at 11 o'clock on next Sunday, we'll uh, then want you to know that we are in our thoughts and prayers. And we pray that God will bless you through this week. And may he keep you rejoicing uh, in the Lord always. May God bless you and may he keep you. Until next time, uh, see you.